Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy. This is Long Long Honeymoon, and today we're going back to RV school. We're gonna give you newbies out there five tips for better RV, water, and tank management. We're gonna give you the cliff notes and make your next boondocking or dry camping experience go much smoother. If you're an experienced RV traveler, you may already know a lot of this stuff. However, we invite you to watch also and share your wisdom with the rest of us in the comments beneath this video. We'd like to hear from you what techniques you use to better manage your water when you're traveling in an RV. Our Airstream setup is fairly typical. We have three water tanks, a fresh water tank, a gray water tank and a black water tank. Fresh water tank is exactly what it sounds like. It's fresh water that we pump in from a city water connection. Typically, we filter our fresh water. Mm -hmm. Some people put additional treatments in the water. I don't think you really have to do that. We very rarely do that. But fresh water is always fresh, and that's the reservoir that your water pump is gonna draw from when it pumps water into the toilet and into the shower and into the sinks. Mm -hmm. So just remember, your fresh water is water that you haven't used yet, and your gray and black water is water that has been used and is dirty waiting to be disposed of. Gray water is water from the sinks and the shower. Mm -hmm. Black water is the contents of the toilet. When you think about the contents of gray water, obviously it's mostly soapy water mm -hmm. <laughs> because it's shampoo, soap from the shower, soap from the sinks. There's also sometimes some food residue that's gonna be in gray water. Mm -hmm. And this is good to remember, before you wash dishes or put anything in the sink, make sure you wipe it down with a paper towel into the trash so you're reducing the amount of food particles or grease or you know remnants of your meal getting into that tank. That's gonna help in the long run. And we use paper plates quite often mm -hmm. if we really want to conserve water when we're dry camping mm -hmm. because then you don't have as many dishes obviously to clean up after a meal. Now with regard to black water, as long as the contents of the toilet consist of human waste and biodegradable septic tank safe paper, you should be fine, especially mm -hmm. if you add an additional chemical treatment which we'll talk about in a moment. Everything pretty much turns to water and I mean everything as long as you're putting the right stuff in there. Mm -hmm. You know, you should not be putting feminine products or baby wipes or even uh, flushable wipes that you would use in a residential bathroom. Don't put any of those things in your RV toilet. Don't even want to put Purell or any of those sort of cleansing wipes right. into the tank because they're helpful little enzymes and mm -hmm. you don't want to kill those off because you want those in there breaking down solid waste. That's right. And you also need to remember when you're cleaning your toilet not to use residential cleaners that you would use in your toilet at home. Those can be detrimental not only to the contents of your tank, but to all the rubber seals and things that you have in an RV toilet and system that you don't necessarily have in a residential system. Your water pump. Some people have asked, when should I use the water pump? Well, if you are not connected to city water, you're going to need to turn on your water pump in order for water to flow out of the faucet and into the toilet and into the shower. So anytime you want to use water and you're not hooked up and connected to city water with a hose, you're gonna to wanna to turn on your water pump. And in our Airstream, we have a little control panel right there. <laughs> and I just turned on our water pump. So you can just flip this switch. We also have a switch in our bathroom. So we've got two places where we can turn on that water pump depending on where we need to use the water. At least in our rig, we have a little light that tells us that the pump is on. What's important about your water pump is not just when you turn it on, but when you turn it off. And mm -hmm. our practice usually is to turn the water pump off whenever we're not using the water. It's very important that you don't leave the water pump on before 
you get onto the highway and are traveling. We've heard some nightmare stories from people who have accidentally left their water pump on and while they've been riding down the road, somehow a faucet jostles on and then when they arrive at their destination, they open the door to their camper and they find that it has flooded from the water overflowing from the sink or from wherever the water got left on and it just can create a lot of problems and a big mess. So if you are using the water out of your fresh water tank to wash your hands or shower, you're basically going to turn your water pump on and then turn on your faucet, right? Super simple. So there we go. We have free flowing water. We can wash our hands. If you're in the shower, you turn on the, the faucet there and you've got water running through the shower. When you finish, turn off your water pump. Easy as that. So how is flushing your toilet different? Well, it's a little different than a residential toilet in that you manually control the amount of water going into the toilet and leaving the toilet. You turn your water pump on, you use your bathroom, you're ready to flush, right? Most RVs either have a foot pump or they might have a hand pump that you use to flush the toilet. So we have a step foot pump. So when you push halfway down, on this pump, it starts filling the toilet bowl with water. Do you see that? Water's going in. When I want that water to leave, I depress it all the way. And you can see it opens up the tank and the water flows down, right? Well, something to remember in an RV toilet, when you close it from flushing, you want to make sure that there's enough water in there to completely cover that seal down below because if you flush your toilet and you leave the water like that you're going to smell the contents of your black water tank so you want the water to completely cover that whole open area and that's what's going to keep you from having any sort of smell seep up from your black water tank so when you go to clean your rv toilet don't use those residential toilet cleaners like you buy at the store because basically once you clean your toilet bowl with those that water is going to go down and sit in your black water tank and can potentially do damage to that tank and seals and that sort of thing the way i clean our toilet and a lot of you might chime in and have a different way of doing it i drain the water out of the toilet bowl. In fact, I'll turn off the water pump so there's no water at all in the toilet bowl. And then I'll put on some disposable gloves and I'll grab a couple of Clorox wipes and I will wipe out the inside of the toilet bowl with the Clorox wipes. And then I will dispose of the Clorox wipes and my gloves in a garbage bag, right? So nothing is going down into the black water tank that is a chemical. Then you can turn your water pump back on and fill your bowl with water the way it's supposed to be. Our policy is to put tank treatment in after every black water tank flush. The tank treatment that we like to use is this BioPack because it contains enzymes, supposedly, that really help break down solid waste inside the tank. And especially if you're going to leave your RV in storage for any period of time, I think it kind of makes sense to have something in there that's kind of working on any kind of solid waste that's inside the tank. Now we've heard a lot of homebrew solutions for tank treatment. One fellow, for example, recently told me that fabric softener works well in his tanks. Or maybe you have a homebrew solution for a tank treatment that you like to use that works well with your water tanks. If so, post a comment, we'd be curious to hear it. But we like these bio packs, and again, I use them pretty much after every black water tank flush, and occasionally in the gray water tank. Because even though the gray water tank consists mainly of soapy water, there's often some food residue in there, and you could get odors from the gray water tank too if you don't occasionally put in a treatment to kind of deodorize that tank. And I'll show you these things are kind of in these convenient little serving sizes and this little packet will dissolve once it's exposed to water. So I have here my bio pack and we're going to add it to our gray water tank. And to do this, I could put it down the drain of the shower when I'm taking a shower 
or we could put it in through one of the sinks. And so it's just gonna drain down into that gray water tank. And just for ease of filming, we're gonna use the sink here. So I'm gonna put it in and add some water. And you can see how this little bio pack will work. Uh -huh. We don't put them in the gray water tank often, but if you think your RV is going to be sitting still for a while, especially if you're putting it back into storage, then I think it's a good idea to have one in your gray water tank along with some water uh, just to let those enzymes go to work on your gray water tank. And of course, uh, it will also deodorize your gray water as well. Welcome to our Airstream shower. Yep, let's take a shower together, folks. And you ladies out there, there will be an uncensored version of showering with Sean on our pay-per-view site later. RV showers are a little different from showers in a brick and mortar house. That's because of the limited, not only water supply, but water storage capacity of your tanks. And where you will really burn through a lot of your water is when you shower. So the key is to use as little water as possible when you shower. So what you got to do is something called the Navy shower. You turn on your water pump, of course, before you get into the shower. You turn on the water briefly to get yourself wet. Then you turn off the water and you lather yourself up with shampoo and soap. Then you turn on the water again to rinse the shampoo and soap off of your body. And that's pretty much it. And you're actually kind of sitting in the shower with no water running for much of the shower, <laughs> okay? I mean, the water's really running mostly just to, to rinse off the soap from your body. But the first time you go RV camping, you're probably going to blow through your water capacity very quickly because all it takes is one or two long, hot showers and you will be out of water. And if you don't have a sewer connection, then you're in trouble because you're going to have to go dump that water somehow. For you ladies out there with longer hair, I know you're thinking, I've got to shampoo my hair and I've got to condition it. So that's two rinses that you've got to go through. Well, if you're boondocking and you really need to conserve water, do like I do. I will wash my hair with shampoo and completely rinse and then I skip the conditioner process in the shower. Basically, I buy a leave-in detangler or leave-in conditioner that I spray through my hair once I get out of the shower and that does the job just fine. So that way I eliminate that whole second rinse process because as you ladies know, getting conditioner out of your hair takes a lot of water. <laughs> A good thing to do before you go out and do that dry camping or boondocking or what have you is to practice when you're in a full hookup RV park. So the next time you're in a full hookup RV park, pull into your site, make sure your gray tank and your black tanks are totally empty, make sure your fresh water is completely full, and then start the experiment. Take track of every shower you take, every time you wash dishes, and every time you flush the toilet. And then once your tanks get full, once those black and gray tanks get full, before you empty them, you can look back at your records and say, okay, we got six showers in. We got three times of washing the dishes. We flushed the toilet 14 times. And then you'll have an idea of how many days you can go dry camping before you actually get out there in the environment and it'll also teach you your water conservation and you'll have that backup of having the sewer connection nearby so that if you don't do such a great job you can start over now some people ask us how long can you go uh, dry camping or boondocking without having to empty your water tanks of course it all depends on you we have managed to go about eight days um, yeah i think know. our record is nine days by the end, you know, we were ready for some fresh water. <laughs> but, you know, it also depends on the size of your gray and black tanks. Our gray tank is 39 gallons. If you're in a big class A motorhome, your gray tank may be 100 gallons. So 
that's part of the equation as well. Yeah, it kind of depends on you and whether you're in a situation where you need to shower a lot every day. Mm -hmm. If you're camping in one of the sort of drier, cooler climates in the country, you may not have to shower quite as often and you can stretch out those tanks. So that's it guys, five tips to help you better manage your RV water situation when you're out there traveling on the road. We hope this video has been helpful to you newbies out there and you experienced RV travel travelers. Once again, we want to invite you to post a comment beneath this video. Share with us your techniques uh, that help you have a better experience when you're managing water, boondocking, or dry camping with an RV. If you guys enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and share it with your friends. Also, if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button. It means the world to us to have you join Loloho Nation. One other thing you can do to make sure you never miss a video when we post a new one is click that little bell icon next to the subscribe button. That way you get a notification every time we post a new Long Long Honeymoon video. Until next time, Loloho. Lo -lo -ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Hey guys, if you like our videos, a great way to say gracias, senor, is to visit our store on Amazon. You can go directly to amazon.com slash shop slash long, long honeymoon, or you can go to longlonghoneymoon.com and click the large supply store icon on the main page. The icon is so large, I don't even need my eyeglasses to see it. In our store, you will find all sorts of cool stuff, including Long Long Honeymoon hoodies, Long Long Honeymoon t-shirts, my hat, my shoes, my old underwear, my self-respect, everything must go. Proceeds from our Amazon store are reinvested into our show, which requires large amounts of duct tape and lubricant to keep running smoothly. Who let the flies out?